Hi everyone, and welcome again to Nettle, the go-to place to learn about business, finance, economics, and much, much more. Please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and like that notification button below so that you never miss fresh videos and tutorials you might be interested in. Many thanks to our current Patreon supporters and YouTube members for making this video possible, and we'd also greatly appreciate if you consider supporting us as well. So please check the link in the description and click the join button below for more details. My name is Saba, and today we're investigating a quite fundamental test that can complement your analysis of variance, or ANOVA analysis, which is the two keys range test, or sometimes referred to as the two keys Q test. This test is designed to identify whether pairs of groups that you study via your ANOVA analysis have significantly different means. Because the ANOVA test would tell you whether the data is heterogeneous or homogeneous, that is, are there any differences anywhere whatsoever? However, what you might also be interested in is whether there are any pairwise differences between the groups that you've selected. And uh, the obvious question is, why not just use some simple t-tests for the equality of means between every possible pair of groups? This would be possible, however, as there are many groups that we might identify in our data, the number of pairs can be very large, and therefore, this particular testing procedure would be vulnerable to multiple testing concerns, or the family-wise error rate. So, as we test multiple hypotheses, we need to adjust the significance criteria to the number of hypotheses that we test. Obviously, I have got a video on many conventional and uh, frequently applied uh, multiple testing adjustments. Check it out here if you're interested. Uh, but the two keys Q test is a very elegant and direct application of multiple testing adjustments to the analysis of variance output when you evaluate pairwise differences between means across the groups. So let's start with our data set. We have got uh, 200 pumpkins of four different varieties that are labeled over here, and we measured the weight of those pumpkins and kilos. And we're interested in whether the pumpkin weight is heterogeneous across varieties. This is what the conventional ANOVA will accomplish. And we might also wanna know whether any pair of pumpkin varieties have significantly different average weights. So first of all, to calculate average weights across varieties, we can apply the average if function refer to the column that has pumpkin varieties and lock in it, refer to the variety of the pumpkin in the nearby column, and for average range, we select the column of pumpkin weights and lock it as well. This demonstrates uh, what are the differences between average weights across varieties. We can do the giant variety is by far the largest, followed by gold, casper, and squash at the very bottom. The total is just the average uh, across all weights, so unconditional average. And for the number of observations, we can apply the count if function, counting how many pumpkins we've got of each variety. And for the total, we can just count pumpkin IDs or pumpkin weights. So I'll count the weights here. We've got 200 exactly. And if we look at the total sum, of the number of observations across all four groups, we'll get 200, which means that we haven't left anything out and we haven't made any mistakes. Now for the conventional ANOVA, we've got a separate video on ANOVA, uh, and uh, if you're interested in the procedures uh, involved with that, please check this video out, and here I'll be relatively brief. We'll calculate the total variability, which is the sum of squared deviations of individual pumpkin weights from the global average, which is um, single out over here, so with some squared deviation. That leaves us with 8621. Now we need the between group variability, which uh, signals the heterogeneity between pumpkin varieties in terms of average weights. That's also quite easy to do given the template we have just made. Is the sum of squared deviations of average group specific uh, weights minus the global unconditional average squared and multiplied by group specific observation counts that calculates the between group variability of 1491 and within group variability is just the difference between the two that's the unexplained variability that still persists even when we account for pumpkin varieties now we need to record for the f-test or levine's f-test for ANOVA analysis 
how many groups we've got. And we've got four, four groups, four pumpkin varieties. We've got 200 observations. So that's something we have already noted. The degrees of freedom for the model or for the uh, between group variability for our explained squared sum or our explained variability is the number of groups minus one, as any pumpkin can go from the group it currently belongs to into three other groups. That's quite understandable. And the residual number of degrees of freedom is the number of observations minus the number of groups, so 196. The F statistic can be calculated as the ratio of between group variability and the model degrees of freedom in the numerator, and the residual degrees of freedom or residual variability or within group variability divided by the residual degrees of freedom in the denominator. That calculates an F statistic of 13.66, uh, and it can be tested for significance using a right-tailed F distribution with model and residual degrees of freedom. And we can see that the p-value is very small, meaning that our result is overwhelmingly significant. Uh, the null hypothesis of uniform uh, weights across all four groups has to be rejected in favor of the alternative hypothesis that the pumpkin weight is heterogeneous across groups, that there are some differences there. But what those differences are, if you approach it, um, not statistically, but just use an eye test, with the naked eye you can see that, well, probably the giant variety of pumpkins has larger weight than some other varieties. But to approach it rigorously, we will need to use the Tinky's range test and evaluate the significance of every single possible pairwise difference between average group weights. For that, we need to consider what possible um, pairs we've got. Well, as we've got four groups, there are six possible pairs. Again, uh, evaluating the difference between squash and gold is the same as evaluating the difference between gold and squash. So. Uh, we can avoid double counting here. So the first three uh, potential pairs all involve group one. So we can evaluate one against two, one against three, and one against four. Then another two pairs would involve group uh, two to start with. Again, we have already done one, two, so we don't need to do two, one. We can uh, start with two, three, and two, four. And the final group we haven't counted for is three, four. Now we can calculate absolute differences between groups in the numerator of the uh, Tukey's Q statistic formula. That would be the absolute difference between, here we can use the index function, refer to the group-wise averages, and refer to the first group index, minus the index of the same array, the same range of group-specific means, and refer to the second um, group-specific index. And we can calculate all pairwise differences this way. Now, for the Q statistic, we need to uh, divide those absolute uh, pairwise differences by the standard error of the ANOVA test. And uh, this is why uh, ANOVA needs to precede the two keys Q test. However, and this is a common misconception, uh, you do not need to have a significant ANOVA result to have significant Tukey's Q test results, as the Tukey's procedure already corrects for multiple testing adjustments. So even if you have got an insignificant ANOVA, you still might pick up truly significant differences between individual groups. So do not be discouraged if your statistic is insignificant. You can still use the Tukey's Q test to um, complete your analysis. But now for the standard error, we can calculate it as a square root of the within group variability or residual variance of ANOVA divided by the residual degrees of freedom. That gives us a standard error of around 6.03. And it means that Q statistics for all six uh, pairwise uh, comparisons can be calculated as the difference, the absolute difference we have just calculated, divided by the standard error. And we lock it as it stays the same across all tests. And now we can uh, evaluate the significance of the obtained Q statistics. Uh, it can be proven that such a statistic follows a studentized range distribution with k and n minus k degrees of freedom. This is a distribution that's adjusted for uh, multiple testing as we are picking, uh, well, uh, differences between groups and we will quite naturally focus on the larger ones. Those three other differences between the weights of giant variety and other three varieties that are not that large. And this distribution accounts for this particular um, fact. 
So the Q statistics cannot uh, be plugged into the conventional T distribution due to this um, very reason, and we have to evaluate it using the studentized range distribution. Unfortunately, the distribution function for the studentized range distribution is quite uh, complicated, and therefore it's not implementable directly in Excel. You can implement it in Python if you like, there are packages for that. So we have to resort to the good old practice of looking up critical values in a table. And here I've got this table that denotes 5% uh, and 1%, so the 1% critical value is naturally higher and it is uh, posted below the 5% critical value. And we need to find the closest uh, residual degrees of freedom as well as look up our number of groups. So K is the number of groups here. We've got four groups, four pumpkin varieties. So we can look up this particular column and we see that the statistic uh, does quite slowly converge to the value at um, an infinite number of observations that the asymptotic value. So here uh, we can choose something that's between 120 residual degrees of freedom and infinity. We can see that the difference is not that large, so convergence is relatively fast. So for 196, we can reliably use the um, asymptotic value for four groups. And that would be 3.63, uh, critical value of the Q statistic for significance at 5%, and 4.4 uh, for significance at 1%. So let's see whether our results are significant at 5%. Because if our Q statistic exceeds 3.63, which is indeed the 5% uh, critical value for four groups and the infinite number of observations, we say that it's significant, so one and insignificant zero otherwise. And we can see, quite paradoxically, that given the 2 keys range Q test, none of the uh, individual pairwise differences are significant. However, the ANOVA test um, shows that the results are overwhelmingly significant. This p-value is very low. What's going on here? Well, that's a very common paradox in uh, ANOVA analysis and 2 keys Q range test, simply because uh, they are based on the same assumptions, but they can give you contradictory results. It can be the fact that the end of a test result is insignificant, but some differences here are. And as we've seen here, that the uh, data is heterogeneous, but none of the pairwise differences are. This is absolutely normal and you shouldn't be afraid of that. Just interpret the results correctly. Uh, another Property that can be uh, observed here, quite naturally, is that two keys range test seems to be very conservative. The adjustment that it makes for um, the multiple testing for the family-wise error rate, given that we investigate six groups, is quite uh, severe. And uh, we would not have been able to uh, reject any of the six null hypotheses about pairwise differences. And that's all there is for the two keys Q test uh, application for ANOVA analysis of pairwise differences. Please leave a like on this video if you found it helpful. In the comments below, I'm making to see any further suggestions and videos you would like me to record. And please don't forget to subscribe to our channel and support us on Patreon. Thank you very much and stay tuned.